What's the difference between these two Ender 3s? This one is running Clipper on a Raspberry Pi. This one is running Clipper on a Thin Client. I'll show you how to do it on today's Crimson Technology. If you've been looking for an alternative to the sky-high prices of Raspberry Pis right now, this just might be what you're looking for. These thin clients can be had for as little as $25 on eBay. And with just a little bit of work, you can get these things running Clipper on your 3D printer. Today I'm going to show you how you can do it. Some of the things you're going to need are, of course, a thin client. These are Dell Wise 3040s. These are 1.4 gigahertz Intel Atom processors. They have two gigabytes of RAM. They come with either 12 volt or 5 volt input. This model that I have is a 12 volt input. It has two DisplayPort outputs, two USB ports on the back, two more on the front, one of which is USB 3.0, and you get an Ethernet jack. And this one also has built in Wi Fi. Some of the models do not have built in Wi Fi. So that's something to look out for if you're planning on doing a wireless setup. Now to set up our thin client, we're going to need a few things first. We're going to need a USB flash drive, preferably USB 3.0 since this does have a USB 3.0 port on the front of it. That'll help you install the operating system a lot faster. We're going to need some kind of a mouse and keyboard. I've got an all-in-one unit here. You're going to possibly need a DisplayPort to HDMI adapter if you don't have a monitor that supports DisplayPort. And a lot of these thin clients do not come with power adapters, which is fine for our 3D printing purposes because you're most likely going to want to run this off of the printer's power supply. Although being that these are 5 or 12 volt units, you're going to have to drop them down because most printers are 24 volts. I'd suggest getting one of these buck converters and then wiring on a plug so that it interfaces with the back of the unit. I'm also going to need to download a copy of Debian. Uh, what you're going to need for these thin clients is going to be Debian non-free edition. Uh, that includes all of the firmware and drivers for this specific hardware. So if you have the wireless chip, it's not going to work unless you download the non-free version. I have that linked in the description down below. So you're going to download the 11.5 non-free AMD64 ISO CD. And you're going to install the AMD64 net install ISO, not the EDU net install ISO, just the 11.5 AMD64 net install ISO. So go ahead and download that. We're also going to download Rufus. That's a way for us to get the ISO that we just downloaded onto our USB flash drive so that we can install Debian. So you're going to come down here to Rufus 3.2, click download on that, and then we're going to open that right away. And you're going to come over here and click select and click on the ISO that we just downloaded. Now for the device, now is a good time to plug in that USB drive. It should auto detect it. And there it did. So now we can go ahead and just hit start. And if this window pops up, you just want to click write in DD image mode. Click OK. It'll ask you if you want to format. Click OK again. And now it's done, so we can click close. And we're done on the computer. You can unplug your USB flash drive. So once you've got your power hooked up, you can plug in your USB flash drive to the USB 3.0 port. You can plug in your USB drive for your mouse and keyboard. And you can plug in your adapter if you need an adapter, otherwise plug in your monitor cable. It doesn't matter which port you plug it into for the display port, you can plug it into port one or two, it'll output the video the same way on both. And then we just need a screen. I'll be using my laptop screen for this. I've got screen recorder on there. Now when you turn on your thin client, you're going to be greeted with a screen that looks something like this. It's going to check and it's not going to find anything. That's totally normal. What you want to do is hit F2. It'll reboot to the setup. Then you're going to come down here to unlock. And the default password is Fireport with a capital F. Then come up here to boot sequence. Now, if your flash drive is unchecked like it is here, go ahead and check that. Then come over here, click on it, and hit the up arrow until it's at the top. Then come down here and hit apply, OK, and exit. Now it's going to reboot, and it should boot from your USB flash drive. 
If you see a screen that looks like this, great. Hit graphical install. Now if you're in the US, you can just hit continue three times. So on these Dell 3040s, you're going to have two options, either Ethernet or Wi-Fi. I'm going to use Wi-Fi, so I'm going to come down and click Continue, and then you're going to click on your network and whatever you use for your security, and then type in your password. Now for this, you can change it to whatever you want. I'm going to put it as Ender 3 Pro. And for this, you can also put it for whatever you want. I'm going to put it as Local. And that just means that on your network, if you're searching for that, it's going to come up as ender3pro.local. For the root password, you can choose whatever you want. I'm just going to use Raspberry, as though this was a Raspberry Pi. For your username, choose whatever you want. I'm going to choose Pi, and Pi again. And for the user password, I'm going to choose Raspberry again. Choose whatever time zone you're in and hit continue. Now when you get to partitioning disks, you're going to click on manual and then hit continue. And you should see a screen that looks like this. Now there's a couple things we want to do in here. Now if you have the 8 gigabyte version of these Dell 3040s, you're going to have barely enough room with only 6.3 gigabytes free to install Clipper and everything else that you need to install on top of having room for all of your G-code files on your printer. So what I suggest you do is delete the swap file because you're not really going to need the swap file when you have two gigabytes of RAM and all you're doing is running a 3D printer. So we can go ahead and double click that or just click it once and hit continue. And you're going to do delete this partition. And now you see you have one gigabyte of free space. We're going to come up here to the ext4 partition. We're going to delete that as well. And we're also going to come up here to the ESP partition. And we're going to resize that because that takes up way more room than it needs to. We're going to resize that to 100 megabytes and click continue. Click continue again. And now that's been resized to 100 megabytes and you have 7.7 .7 gigabytes of free space. So we can double click that. Go create new partition. 7.7 .7 gigabytes. And you see it automatically put it in as ext and mount point at root. So go ahead and hit done setting up this partition and then down here finish partitioning and write changes to disk. Continue. It's going to prompt you that you don't have a swap space. That's fine. Just hit no. Continue. And then yes. Continue. So if you're in the United States you can just press continue and continue and continue. You can leave this at no and click continue. And when you get to this window, you're going to uncheck Debian desktop environment and GNOME. And I suggest checking SSH server so that you can remotely control your printer from somewhere else in the house. Click continue. Now when you get to the end of the installation, don't click continue. What you're going to want to do is hit Control, Alt, and F3. That'll bring up a console. Hit Enter. Now you're going to type apt-install network-manager. That'll make sure that when you reboot, your internet will work. When the pound sign shows up, that means it's installed. Now you're going to type make directory mkdir mount mnt boot. Make sure you type it exactly as shown or else this won't work. And we're going to go cd dev and ls. Now we just made two partitions on our disk. So what you're going to do is look for a P1 and a P2. And I see it here. It's MMC, BLK, 1, P1, and 1, P2. So those are our disks that we just made. Partition 1 is going to be the first partition on the disk, which is our EFI partition that we made. That's the one that we need to mount. So we're going to type mount dev mmc blk 1p1 space mnt boot. Now we're going to type make directory mkdir mount boot efi boot. 
capitals on the EFI and the boot. Now we can type touch mount boot EFI capitals, boot capitals, and then boot x 64efi all capitals. Now we can go and hit Control alt f5 That'll bring us back to this screen where you can finally hit continue. Now you can take out your USB flash drive, and now you're in the Debian boot menu. You can hit enter or just wait five seconds until it starts booting. So what you're going to do when you get to the login prompt is type root, and then whatever your root password was, mine was raspberry. And then there's a couple things we need to do before we can re-log in under the Pi username or whatever username you chose. The first thing we're going to do is install sudo. So we're going to type apt install sudo. And all of these commands are down in the description. Then we're going to go sudo vi sudo. And we're going to scroll down here underneath this one that says root. And we're going to type pi or whatever your username is and copy the one from root. So all equals parentheses all all parentheses space all okay so everything's copied perfectly now what I like to do is at the bottom of this file I like to put pi all equals all in parentheses and then no pass WD all so that last part that we just put in what that does is it makes it so that you don't have to type in your root password to use sudo. That's how the Raspberry Pi is set up, so I'd like to use that on this as well, so that it's as close to a Raspberry Pi as possible. Hit Control X, Y, and Enter to save that file. The next thing we're going to do before we reboot is type nano etc default grub. That's going to open up this file here. And we're going to change grub timeout to one. That's going to make it so you only have to wait one second for it to auto boot. One second is plenty of time if you need to change something, if something goes wrong and you need to get into the grub boot menu, but that knocks off four seconds of boot time. So your printer is going to boot four seconds faster. Hit control X, Y, and enter. And then we're going to type update dash grub. Once that's done, you can type sudo reboot. Once we're booted back up there, we're going to go ahead and log in as our Pi user, Raspberry as our password. And then we can type sudo apt install git git. Once that's installed, we're going to type git clone https github.com slash th33xitus slash k-i-a-u-h dot git. Now once that's done, we hit dot slash k-i-a-u-h slash k-i-a-u-h dot s-h. And now we're in the Clipper installation and update helper. From here we can hit 1 for install, 1 for Clipper, 1 for Python 2.7. It's already on 1, so you can just hit enter, and then y and enter. So when you get to this point here, hit yes or Y. Now hit 2, enter, Y, enter, and now it'll install Moonraker. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and type 4 for fluid. You can choose fluid or mainsail. I prefer fluid. You can choose mainsail if you want. When you get to this point, you can choose whether you want to install MJPEG Streamer. If you want to have a webcam stream of your printer printing, to keep an eye on it, choose yes. Otherwise, you can choose no. I prefer to have it because if you ever decide to upgrade to a webcam, that way it's already installed. You don't have to install it. You can choose yes or no here. I choose no because I already have a configuration. If you're not planning on using a screen, you're done. You've got Clipper installed and you can hook this up to your 3D printer and it will work. If you do want to use a screen, you can go ahead and hit 5 to install Clipper Screen. I'm going to do that right away. Now that that's installed, I can hit B for back. 
Q for quit. Now we're back at the console. Now let's type in IP ADDR and hit enter. And here's where you can find your IP address. Here I have, right here is my IP address, my local IP address. So we're gonna take that IP address and we're gonna put it into our web browser. And now we're remotely connected to our thin client running Clipper. Now all we have to do is plug in our thin client to our 3D printer and we're good to go. So you can go ahead and plug in your thin client to your 3D printer through USB now. If you've got one of these Dell Wise 3040s like I have, I actually designed this mount for it specifically for Ender 3 style printers. You just slide it in from the front and it hooks on on the little feet in the back that hold it in place. It's nice and snug in there. Then you just take off this rubber foot on the front of your printer and you take the whole unit and you slide it over the extrusion there and then you can put the foot back on line it up with the front of your case there and it's nice and secure looks nice it's almost as if it was designed to fit there now the easiest way i've found to install these buck converters into your ender 3 is to just take off this panel here now there's two screws inside of here you can see right there the two in between the blue plugs one side is positive and one side is negative Positive is going to be on this side because the red wire here is going to positive. This one's going to be negative. So you've got positive and negative. So if you grab a tweezers and you take your two wires that you have soldered to your buck converter and you push them up underneath here. And now you can see I've got my wires in there, and they're in there nice and tight. Now we can put this back in. I like to put this in first. Now you've got your wire for plugging in your thin client. It's a little bit of cable management that is now hooked up and we're ready to turn this on. And with that up and running, you're good to go. You've now got Clipper installed on your 3D printer with a thin client. Thanks for watching. See you next time.